I'm Kelly Carter, and this is Another Act. Omari Hardwick, welcome back to the show. So, you know, I want to start here, and I want to remind the people, oh, that when you were a defensive back at the University of Georgia, you were on your way to becoming one of the all-time Georgia football lettermen. So this latest project has to be a dream come true for that collegiate athlete. Go back then and tell me about that. Put me back in the locker room. <laughs> there is that moment. There's the moment where you go, not only were you an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 40 minutes um, away as a kid from the place that you ended up being, which is the legendary Between the Hedges, Sanford Stadium, Vince Dooley Field, right? Sanford Stadium, Vince Dooley Field, rest in peace. Our late, great, uh, beloved, not only coach, but also um, athletic director, who of course was the AD when I came in. But to grow up in Decatur, Georgia, you know, literally again, only about an hour and 40 away, and to end up playing for the dogs, which when you grew up where I grew up, I think the way it went, not that we didn't root for uh, Hugh Durham basketball, which Dominique Wilkins comes out of University of Georgia, but you really rooted for Georgia Tech basketball. Um, and it might've just been because my pops, obviously choosing to raise us in Atlanta was a big Georgia Tech basketball fan. But ironically, we rooted for Georgia Tech basketball and University of Georgia football. So to come full circle as a kid and play for the University of Georgia, but then to come even more full circle to bring my former life into this new world of being an actor. Mm -hmm. And I try to remind all of these young, uh, young to older athletes who my big brother or mentored or, or whatever I can call it, even if just imparting a piece of wisdom here and there. Um, I've always said, Kelly, that the athlete is oft misinterpreted as a uh, athlete versus an entertainer slash artist. And I think that if somebody were to look at my body of work as an as an actor, they would go, I guess the foundation of it, if the actor is the trampoline, I guess underneath Omar's trampoline as an actor is the fact that he's an athlete mm. and he's a poet and he's a music guy. Um, but the pressing, uh, I would say drive that um, I've sort of walked my journey called life with is that of an athlete. Mm pressing drive. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily pressing, of course, to get there in a, you know, overnight kind of manner, because as athletes, um, you don't. It takes a lot of years, an arduous, lithy combination of time spent and hours put in, um, not just in terms of time spent, but also in hours put in for your craft that absolutely translated in how I approached acting. Yeah. It was me, dare I say, because I thought about the way that we had to approach every day on a field or on a court or on a field if it were baseball, but specifically to your great point, football. Um, and to be best friends with Champ Bailey and Kelly to think about the fact that, you know, I don't know if there's a Hall of Fame in acting, but for me to leave some imprint, some mark in this industry is pretty freaking humbling, let alone to get where he got which obviously sport is way more subjective. Yeah. Acting is objective. Yeah. Kelly can watch a movie and go, that actor was amazing though. And I can say, I thought they were horrible. <laughs> and both opinions work. In sport, you can't say somebody's incredible unless they're incredible. Yeah. Because if they're not incredible. So yeah. I think it, um, it, it, it made me cross my T's and dot my I's a lot, a lot more coming from the world of sport. I had to think more subjectively. Yeah. Anton Cropper saying cut as our esteemed director of fantasy football. To me, the training of an actor who was a former athlete would make it where Anton is not even having to say cut before inside myself. I'm going, no, we should cut. <laughs> that was not the play. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, I definitely remember being repped by early agents and, you know, me trying to get rid of the resume portion that said football player. And they would go, no, keep that on. And I would go, why would you keep that on? I want to be taken serious as an actor. Okay. Really, really what was being stated by those early agents, agent in particular, um, Michael Green, as you know, Kelly, who, when I left Michael, he got Chadwick, who was, you know, not only rest in power and in peace, but he sat behind you 
in the backdrop. Yeah. Um, Chadwick and I both know that Michael Green operated in a space of, hey man, you bring that which can't be taught in class. Mm. When they don't teach in Meisner or in Shakespeare, mm. I mean, they might teach it in, in theory, mm. but what they don't teach um, literally is that which a coach teaches you in X's and O's yelling at you in a locker room. So mm. for me, yeah, to take you back to that point and again, to then watch people end up in the NFL when I didn't, and, and somebody like Champ, who was that close to me, and as you know, he just invited me back, if you caught it um, on the social media, he just invited me back just to be a part of his college Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. He went into the Pro Hall of Fame induction during Army of the Dead, yeah. and I missed it because of filming Army of the Dead, but for him to invite me back to that, it ended up being one of those moments of surreal nature for me, Kelly. Like, mm. now he's trying to produce films with me, or not trying, he's doing it. Mm. So from my world of that, which he ended up not only excelling in, but dominating. Yeah. Second greatest corner behind uh, Deion Sanders. Wow. Now next to me and going, hey, oh, bring me into this world that God set up for you, which is that of acting, um, that of directing one day and, and, and that of producing. And let me hang out with you as a producer. It's pretty amazing yeah. to be about my life coming full circle and all in one fell swoop. Yeah. Nickelodeon and, and Paramount Plus presented the perfect package of all of the forces inside the bag called Omari being combined. And, and here we have it. Gosh, I love that. You know, I want to go back a little bit to something that you just said in that answer. And was it for you that you wanted to run away from football because you wanted to hurry up and get that off your resume? Was it that you really felt like you just wanted to distance yourself from that athletic path and just really go full throttle with acting? Kelly, you are always, you know, you journalists and you just, you smarty. <laughs> Anyone listening, not only in the rooms, on the sideline, to Kelly asking, asking, excuse me, that question, but any of you uh, fans and, and beloved supporters of mine who are watching this interview, whenever you're watching it, um, what Kelly's asking has perhaps made me not more stumped than ever, but it's made me look at some of the reasons, and I said it, Kelly, on a prior interview today, some of the reasons maybe that people go, I always felt he should be, Romari Hardwick, wow, he's a talented cat. I felt he should be here. Why is it taking him a minute to get where we perhaps perceived him going? And uh, or where we think he should be. Many fans walk up to me and they go, you, you know, you're, and then some, you know, younger, of course, will go, oh man, it's, watch where your career goes from here. And as you and I know, Kelly, it's freaking already been, this is the 20th year. This year's the 20th year. So mm. I think to answer your astute question, it's both. Mm. I think for me, I don't know how to, you know, I, I always tell my younger brother, I go, I, I definitely agree, you know, younger brother, my blood younger brother, not the mud brothers, but the blood one. I say, I definitely agree. You got many things that you could do, but you got to really make sure that you focus on one. Mm. That one will be the key to unlock the door for the various other things. Mm. I think that Capricorn freaking nature of climb the hill, climb the hill, climb the hill. Don't look to the left or the right. Climb the hill, climb the hill. Don't, 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 don't look backwards. Climb the hill, climb. I think for me, perfectly you asked the question, Omari, was it the former or the latter? Was it the fact that you just didn't want it on the resume so that you could focus on really climbing the hill in this new world of acting? Or was it the fact that you thought you wouldn't be taken serious? And I think one is of ego and one is of id. Okay. id if we're not working in id, we're working in ego. Yeah. From the id perspective, which is definitely denoting spirit. It was about making sure to climb the hill and be and be focused on that, which I've told my brother for years. One thing, the world and God will expose whether we're that level of gift at these other things that we might think that we're gifted enough to put some food on the table doing. But God and the life that you lead will expose whether you're actually that good or not. But focus on the one thing that you know you're pretty freaking good at. For me, Kelly, I knew I was pretty different at acting. And I knew that every single collegiate 
teammate of mine who's still in my life, they all were very good at reminding me, if this football thing doesn't work out, dog, mm -hmm. you got some right here. From yeah. Terrell Davis to Champ Bailey, to Robert Edwards, to Travis Stroud, to Heinz Ward. And these are people of note, you know, to the present day Kyrie's, to Draymond's, to Emmanuel Sanders, to Saquon texting me the other night at 11 at night, Saquon texted and said, oh, did you go to acting class? There was no hello. <laughs> there was a million hellos days prior, yeah. but this one was out of the blue. The text says, did you go to acting classes? Well, Kelly, you could surmise that what he's obviously thinking about doing is he's basically saying, does it cut? Is it just, can I kind of just fall in? Yeah. And so I think the latter is, is, you know, connected to what my answer to Saquon would be, which is get serious about it. Yeah. Yes, I did go. And I think to eradicate on a resume that of football makes it where people take you serious in my mind. Yeah. And then to eradicate it so that you didn't have to look back at the pain of not becoming what you thought you could in football mm -hmm. is also at play. Mm -hmm. I think the first time ever that the stumping from a great question made me go, I think I was doing both. And I've never thought about that. Mm -hmm. I think I only thought I was telling an agent, don't put that on because they won't take me serious as a craftsman in this space. Mm -hmm. But in reality, maybe I just had to really say goodbye to that to take the cleats off, officially take them off. Yeah. And also unofficially, yeah. because, you know, maybe you're not necessarily ever taking them off. Mm. Here comes a movie that asks you to put the cleats back on. Yeah. So maybe you're never really taking them off. Denzel once said, you know, really, do you ever say goodbye to any character you've ever played? They're all kind of in you once you played it. Mm. So there is a, a characterization to playing a football player. And we do it in real life. So many of these athletes, I try to impress upon them. You are taking on a character. Yeah. Don't be afraid of coming into my industry where you're taking on a character literally because you kind of figuratively are going to a place that you wouldn't at the Thanksgiving table go to when you're running down on kickoff coverage trying to take somebody's helmet off. <laughs> That's a whole nother ball of wax. I think it's dope. I can hear God saying for a long time now, do something different in the industry as a, as a former athlete that will make it where former athletes don't only think about the possibilities of being a journalist only but maybe they could come into this world mm -hmm. and maybe some not in front of the camera mm -hmm. maybe some director maybe some producers maybe some writers you know maybe camera operators but who's to say that you know particularly people who look like you and i kelly can't come into every respective industry and find our footing mm -hmm. i think i've you know hopefully when it's all said and done i've aided that prior side of me and those fellow athletes can look at me and go yeah, he's aided the fact that this thing that we were doesn't necessarily denote what we are going to be. So I'm proud of that. And I'm, I'm glad that I, if, if if in any way I could bring that to this movie, then I'm proud I was able to bring the collision of my life into one, one, one project. Yes, there are so many great examples of former and current athletes who have come after you that have said, I can do more than just dribble and shoot or throw a football. But for you, what was the moment in your career that made you say, okay, this is why I said goodbye to the sport. Great, God, that's a great question. It has to be, uh, it was It was, It was. was one year, Kelly, it was one year. And it was, uh, it was one year. And ironically, it, it starts with, this is crazy. It starts with being on a football field, gridiron game. But Kelly, I'm not on the football field as a football player. I'm on the football field as the precursor to Shabu, who was the precursor to Ghost. I'm acting an absolute fool. I am a thug who is lost trying to figure life out. Definitely having lo love for, and a kid I'd still keep up with. You know my personality. So Jade Yorker is still very much a little brother of mine yeah. who played the running back, who was the little brother of mine in Gridiron Gang. And I'm still really close to Exhibit, and I'm obviously very close, of course, to uh, Dwayne Johnson. You know, Journey Smollett I'm close to, so it's amazing. That was my first real, you know, Queen Latifah and Billy Woodruff put me in Beauty Shop. After Spike Lee put me in Sucker Free City. Sucker Free is Anthony Mackie, Malik Strouder, Ken LeWang, you know, from the uh, X-Men world, and, and obviously Ben Crowley, but then Spike Lee. And Sh Sh uh, Cesar Charlone, who shot City of Gods and also as a camera operator on Man on Fire with Denzel. So my first entry into this world was a hell of an acting force. 
Right. Second was beauty shop. But third, I would say, was the beginning of a year that is the answer to your question. I would say by 05, 06, I went, oh, I get it. Okay. Have me on the field, God, not as a football player. Mm -hmm. I'm back on the field, but I'm toting a gun. And I'm part of a story as the non-hero. Mm -hmm. I'm the antagonist, if there ever was one. And then I go to the heroic stance of cadet formation and saluting next to Kevin Costner and the Guardian only months after doing the gridiron game. Mm. The roles can't be more different. I went from thug within months to next to, you know, Kevin Costner, a legend who's even growing even more as a legend yeah. um, on Yellowstone, as we know, and playing a Coast Guardsman. So how do you know, you go from a thug in South Central on a football field to them being next to Kevin Costner as a Coast Guardsman, to moving to Vancouver, following Tom Everett Scott while driving to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Tom Everett Scott, who was pegged by Tom Hanks, you know, in that thing you do as a next version of him, so to speak. So by 05, 06, after getting cut from my attempt in 97, nine years later, I went, I got it, God, I got yeah. you. Yeah, you know, and if you needed any more testament to how skilled you are as an actor, and how much people really enjoy seeing you bring characters to life, let's be honest, the noise still hasn't quieted down. Everyone's appreciation for what you did with Ghost is still so loud, but what does that say to you after saying goodbye to that character? Now at this point, you know, a few years ago, and people still love and still talk about that complex and conflicted character and performance that you gave us. Man, it's, it can't be anything but a spiritual lift if not a takeoff. It's always explosive, excuse me, in terms of the energy or the or the uh, the gust of wind. If love is wind, mm -hmm. the love that I get feels like a gust of wind every time I get it. Because mm -hmm. as you know, I'm a storyteller. So it's hard to think about the responses of the stories being told. Your job as a storyteller is to simply tell a story. And that, you know, if it's not a one man show, which is so weird to be called or coined anyways, if it's not a one man or one woman show, um, and I say it's weird to coin it that because on stage you got lighting, you got, you know, you're at a theater space, whether off Broadway on, whether Seattle or Minnesota theater, whether Chicago theater, whether New York, whether the Fox in Atlanta, whatever stage you're on, you still have a team. So that feels weird for me, but you would say, speaking of team, oh, you come from team. So to say one man is weird for you. So it's hard for there to be so much love given to the quarterback that I was asked to be. Or if Tom Brady's ever gotten used to it. Shout outs to him because that's probably the greatest quality that he possesses. Mm -hmm. Tom still feels like, yeah, but y'all drafted me seventh round. Tom, you are all considered the top 10 ever to play. Yeah, but you still drafted me seventh round. Tom, you are now officially the greatest. Yeah, but you still drafted me seventh round. And so, you know, we're talking, Kelly, about a personality that's not that different from his. I just kind of always in the back of my mind have the fact um, play out that I went to work with several, 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 several castmates. So to be stopped for the work that I did is never an easy thing for a guy who comes from team sport. I wasn't a track guy. I played, I ran it because I'm pretty fast. But I'm not that dude. I wasn't a swimmer. I'm a, I'm a, I wasn't even a tennis player. It's hard for me. And so I think that even bothered sometimes my colleagues, you know, not the actors, but I think it bothered even producers who at times don't know, you know, there's a couple of us who come from ball who don't have the size of Terry Crews or, or Dwayne Johnson. Mm. They're obviously ex-former ball players. For me, I can look like the guy next door who's athletic enough looking. You know, if you, but as you know, I don't want to post anything with my shirt off. So if you're going to make me take my shirt off, you know, that I, part of my whole thing was Courtney, he's got to run. What do you mean run? Well, I can't stand watching a guy that looks athletic or a girl, a woman, excuse me, who looks athletic. And if it's a series, if it's a movie, whatever. Cause that's in a 40 to 80 day shoot, if not a six month shoot, but we watch it in two hours, it's done. But you're talking about a series, six and a half years. You gonna want me to take my shirt off 12 times during the filming, but not show me being athletic back to the athlete. Yeah. 
Why do I just look like that? That's corny. <laughs> Show me the process of why I end up having a body like that. Yeah, but Amari, you already have that body. I know from ball. <laughs> I didn't do workouts. I'm not that guy. So it's my layers that I bring to so many things are the prior layers. My pops always says it. We're a total of our some parts. Because I got a lot of freaking some parts. Mm. It's just a whole bunch of them. So I think um, that's another great question that you that you ask. I think it's hard to not feel the gust of wind that is so breezy and beautiful. Some weeks when people talk about, man, I miss you all as ghost. And, and then in you know, other regards, the following week, it might be difficult for me to hear. And it's because, you know, at that point, you've posted about a movie that you want people to go support and they go, yo, I don't know about all that. Come back as Ghost. Okay. And my mom goes, I'm like, do they want me to play Ghost till I'm 65 years old? Like, <laughs> and the innocence in me ends up driving home asking that. Mm. As a quality, you know, I don't carry that arrogance. So I listen, you know, I've gotten some of the greatest advice in my life riding a bike from South Central to the Poetry Lounge on Melrose and Fairfax in LA. And the homeless person who I stopped to talk to gave me some of the greatest advice of all time. So, you know, my personality hears people, which is not always good. People talk about, you know, Tupac or Eminem and their sensitivity. Well, their gift is that freaking pen. So if sensitivity meets you talking about them in a way where they then get to write about you, then be careful what you say about them. I don't have anything but love when people are giving me what they're giving me about ghosts. They never say it was horrible. Never. They don't say it was average. They don't say it was good. They go, you bodied that. But then I can't body it forever. There's no way you, you know, you would get mad if all of a sudden I was up for a James Bond film and the exec producers said, Omari is now not in the running. Why? Because too many fans said that they see him as ghost only. The fans would then get mad and go, no. Give our bro a shot. You gotta be careful what you say. Sometimes these execs don't go much further than the comments being made around the person. Yeah. In this social media driven world, I'm aware of that last statement I made to you. Back in the day, execs aren't listening to fans because fans didn't have a microphone to talk. Mm -hmm. Presently, it's not an easy thing to navigate, but it's a super humbling thing for people to go, you were so good, I want you to play it until you're Cicely Tyson's age. Yes. I that's one of the greatest compliments ever. Yes. But yeah. as a guy who's never not climbing the hills and whose mind is never not churning on what's next, what's next, what's next, it's hard for me to go, but they don't really want me to. Mm -hmm. I, end up, I end up asking myself, do they really want me to play that forever? And I don't think they think about it. I just think that they want whatever euphoric feeling you gave them in that performance, in that character, wearing those suits, with a beard looking this way, don't cut your beard that way, put your, like it's crazy, but it's yeah. so cool at the same time, if that's you know a, a good enough way to explain it to you. It's crazy, but it's such a beautiful, humbling thing. No, thank you for that. That was such a great answer. Uh, before I let you go, I will ask you what's next. I was gonna say, I feel like you have some more sports stories in you. Uh, you know, I wanted to get a Joe Lewis update because the Detroiter in me wants to know that, but what's next for Omari Hardwick? Um, well, what's next to be seen is a movie with Halle Berry called The Mothership. Mm. It's gonna be great. It's so beautiful, Kelly. And then right after that, I went into a movie with Jennifer Lopez called The Mother. So that word mother has been uh, very circulatory for me in the last almost two years. It was an 18 month run of not a lot of break, um, starting in Australia with Tony Collette and Mickey Spiro directing. and another young brother um, who's now become that and Jacob Scipio. And it w that was an amazing experience. Bella Heathcote, who's also a native to Australia, just an amazing experience. Um, and so Gail Birmingham, Gail Birmingham, who's from Yellowstone, speaking of Yellowstone. So that was an amazing experience. And then I went right into again, the Halle Berry piece. The world will see that soon. The Jennifer Lopez piece called The Mother will come out after that, if not before. I can't remember which order. Okay. And. Um, there's some things that I can't talk about that are just dynamite and the people that I'm working with or whom I'm working with will just electrify fans. And I hope that, um, and I said this to, to a guy the other day who was talking about ghost and power. It was that, you know, me, cause I don't walk around, but just me, sometimes a family, but I don't have security around me like that. You know, maybe an airport, but I was just walking in the target, I think. And he really wanted to talk about the character. And, uh, and I talked to him about it. 
And then he said, so man, will I ever get to see, you know, Ghost again? And I said, nah, bro, but you'd so get to see me again. And he said, bro, that's what I'm talking about. And so whatever he's saying in, in, in terms of that's what I'm talking about, for me, Kels, I'm hoping that people look at what's coming, that I have not set foot on set of doing yet, but I will soon be. And I hope that, you know, they're able to go, wow, he's really going to stay. Because I equally want our culture to always give ourselves permission to be more than just one thing. Absolutely. That was so perfect. Uh, thank you for being that vulnerable and sharing that too. That was really, really beautiful. And you know, I appreciate it. And I definitely appreciate you. Definitely for you. Thank you.